morning teachers and fellow BGPNs. Welcome to another edition of BGPS News Flash. This is where we bring you the latest news in a flash and inform you about how it affects you and makes you think. I am Jeeva. I am Kyrene and we are from P5 Compassionate. During the last news flash, we spoke about the electronic tech that will be used for contact tracing for COVID-19. Today, we will still be focusing on COVID-19. I mean, this is the issue that has been affecting all of us around the world. But what will be our focus this time, Jiva? Today, we will be talking about how Singapore conducted its elections despite the COVID-19 situation. All right, let's, dis let's discuss what happened. First, let's tell our friends what the general Singapore what the Singapore general election is. I'm sure they will have seen party banners all over their estates over the past few past two weeks and would have been wondering about it. Oh yes, and all the party political broadcasts on TV as well. Well, every few years Singaporeans get to choose who they wish to elect to run their country. These people who are elected and win the majority of Singaporeans' votes form the government. Needless to say, Singaporeans who want to choose a group of people they can rely on and trust to run the country they live in. The current period of governance is due to expire next year, so it is necessary for Singapore to have an election as soon as possible. Okay, but since the term of, of the current government lasts till next year, why do we need an election this year? especially during such a risky time. It's true that COVID-19 has posed a challenge for this year's elections, but the government felt that postponing it may not be the best decision as we do not know what the future holds. What if the situation gets worse next year? Oh yes, and if it does get worse, we, we, we will need a team of strong leaders to bring Singapore forward. Okay, so I guess the issue here is how Singapore plans for a safe election amidst the COVID-19 pandemic? Exactly. An election means people will gather in large numbers at voting stations to cast their votes. And we clearly do not want that. Social distancing, remember? So let's share with our friends what Singapore did to ensure safety during the period of election. Well, firstly, unlike other years, this year, people were allocated recommended timings to head to their polling stations so as to avoid crowding. Secondly, I also read that everyone had to have their temperature taken at the entrance. Those who had a fever were sent back home. Thirdly, voters were also provided with plastic gloves to have you to use before casting their votes on the ballot paper. This was done because the ballot papers were handled by others too, like the people doing the counting after the election. But Jiva, did you hear, because of the distribution and removal of gloves, it took too long and the queues were getting too long, so at about noon, the election department did away with the gloves and insisted everyone sanitize their hands before collecting their ballot paper. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, wait, I think voting is compulsory for all Singaporeans aged 21 and above, right? Yeah, that's right. Then how about those who are on quarantine or stay home notice? How did they, how did they vote? The COVID-19 patients and people who are going through quarantine could not vote for safety reasons, but people on SHN stay home notice voted during the special hour, which was from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So this special hour is a new addition to this year's election? Yes, that's right. In order to allow more people to vote, this special hour was created. The people working at the polling stations will wear personal protective equipment during this time in order to stay safe. Also, I suppose those who are on SHN must not take public transport and must return immediately after voting. They must inform the authorities before heading out to vote. Yes, you're right. All right, why did this happen? I mean, I know why the elections have to take place now. We mentioned that the future is uncertain and delaying it may not be the best solution. But why go through the hassle of taking all these precautions? Well, we still want everyone to be safe, don't we? I guess we also want most Singaporeans to get their chance in voting their government. So the special hour was created. And to keep everyone safe, those infected with COVID-19 or under quarantine are strictly not allowed to vote at all, not even during the special hour. Let's watch a video to find out now.
Friday, 10th July is polling day. Eligible voters will receive a poll card showing their polling station and voting time band. On polling day, check the queue status at votequeue.goware.gov.sg to reduce waiting time. Bring your NRIC and poll card and wear a mask. Join the queue to have your temperature taken. Keep one metre apart. Lower your mask for identification. Show the election official your photo on your NRIC. Scan your NRIC to register yourself. Sanitize your hands and put on the disposable gloves before collecting a ballot paper. Go to the polling booth and mark a cross in the empty box for the candidate you are voting for with a self-inking pen. Fold your ballot paper in half and drop it into the ballot box. Voting is safe. Your vote is secret. That video explained a lot. But Jiva, how is this going to affect me and my family? Well, with the election means a new set of leaders and changes in the country. So we must be ready for anything as it may affect us directly or indirectly. Alright, let's link this to our citizenship dispositions. The people who are affected by COVID-19 or people who are going to quarantine cannot vote. So this gives us a sense of reality that if people who are affected by COVID-19 are going through their quarantine, they will not spread the virus. I hope the virus will not worsen after the election. This gives us a sense of hope that with safe distancing measures, the spread of the virus will be contained and everyone will stay healthy and safe. And yes, a will to act too. This is especially for the people who are in quarantine and are affected by COVID-19. They must not vote in order not to spread the virus. And lastly, a sense of belonging. Everyone has a right to vote in the general election in Singapore. Voting shows us that we belong. This brings to our BGPS values. It reminds me of our value of responsibility. Everyone will only stay safe if we each play our part responsibly. If we are not allowed to go out, we should not and strictly follow the rules. With that, we have come to the end of BGPS News Flash. Thank you, Amos, and we will see you after the school holidays. Stay safe, everyone. Wikipians, welcome back to Term 3 Week 7. We have one week more to go before our midterm break. I would like to thank the presenters just now for sharing a little bit about the contemporary issues of the day, especially with regard to our recent general elections, as well as the reminder about our school value of responsibility. I hope you got what they were saying and that I uh, just wanted to share that for this week, it is the last week before we break for the term, the midterm break. And I would assume that by now you would have gotten used to the routine of school and you are slowly catching up with your curriculum recovery. By now it is also a good time for you to reflect and to look back at the past six to seven weeks 
How have you been doing and catching up with your work? Have you been exercising responsibility? Have you been disciplined in following up on your work with your teachers and your homework? Have you been diligent in studying? Right, these are the things I would like you to think about even as we move on into the last week before our midterm break. Now, for this week, term three, week seven, we have a host of activities, a flurry of activities coming up, and we are in the middle of the mother tongue language fortnight, which began last week and which will end this week. We'd like to thank the mother tongue language uh, teachers for organizing this for all of us and remember about the importance of our bilingual education in Singapore. We also have coming up on Wednesday and Thursday, our home-based learning program for the P1s to P5s, while the P6s will continue to prepare for their PSLE by having the preliminary examinations for the oral, for both the English language and the mother tongue. For the rest of us who are on HBL this Wednesday and Thursday, I would like to remind you that HBL is a time for learning. It is an actual school day, so you need to be disciplined and make sure that you wake up on time to proceed with your HBL activities this Wednesday and this Thursday. Next up on Friday this week, which is the last day of school before we break for the midterm holiday is the celebration for, or rather the commemoration of our RHD or Racial Harmony Day. Our teachers have also prepared a new, numerous activities to commemorate RHD and you would remember that RHD in Singapore is actually celebrated on the 21st of July which happens to be in the midterm break. So we will be bringing it forward and celebrating it on the 17th of July, this Friday. The reason why 21st of July was identified for RHD was because of the history of the Hockney bus riots in the past, where there were quarrels between the different races in Singapore, and that resulted in several deaths. And we want to remember that this such a thing should never ever happen to us ever again. So those are the things that we will be having for this week alone. It is an exciting week for all of us. I hope we are all looking forward to end this first half of term three on a high note. Also a reminder about what the students have shared just now about responsibility. When I walk around in school, okay, I want I would like to share some observations that we need to remember to exercise our social responsibility. With regard to safe management measures, remember to put on your mask at all times. I have noticed some students either forgetting to wear their mask when they travel outside the classroom or even in the classroom itself, or sometimes they do not put on their mask properly, not covering their nose. It is also a matter of personal hygiene to make sure that you remember to do your wipe down in the canteen as well as in the classroom after you have finished using the furniture. Remember to maintain distancing amongst each other during your lessons. Make sure there's at least one meter spacing. During your PE lessons, be disciplined to make sure that there's ample space because sometimes during PE, you may not be wearing your mask. So all the more, it is important for you to practice wearing your mask and your shields. We must always be on our guard with regard to COVID-19. Just last week, we have had some community cases, okay, and these have arose over the past few weeks. It is our new normal and we must learn to cope with this. Schools are also not spared. We have heard of four schools last week which have COVID cases. So let us remember okay, to always practice social responsibility. When you notice that there is congestion, keep away from the crowd, especially during arrivals and dismissals. OK, 
Okay, that's the one thing that I want to share with you. And lastly, I'd like to leave with you is to, for you to enjoy this week. Remember to continue to greet your teachers every morning, be courteous, and exercise good manners. When you see the school leaders along the corridor, remember to greet them. Okay, if you see a teacher whose name you do not know, greet the teacher as good morning, sir, good morning, ma'am. Okay, I think that is only basic courtesy. Alright, that's all I have for you for this week. I hope you will enjoy your week as we look forward to the midterm break. See you.